Of course, we you use your words, we you use your hand, your feet, and everything. And we go to do to worship. Amen. Worship is a time of connection. I like what the uh, uh, director of uh, Ashland usually said again. She said, praise is like sowing to heaven. And as you sow, your reward will be the presence of God. So you are calling on the presence. And when worship comes, then you dwell in the worship. It's a connection with heaven. And the glory comes and you stay in the glory. Hallelujah. So you have to sow first to reap. You reap the worship. It's an invitation. Sometimes we praise together, but there's few only who enter into worship. Hallelujah. So don't look left or right. It's your moment. It's your Sunday. Amen. Take a hold of your Sunday. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. We start by thanking him for who he is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 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 Th
thank you. 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 Thank you.
I am on the Lord's side and continue to praise. Don't stop praising. Praise it even if it's not coming out. Praise it even if you see dark around you. Bless it out. Bless it out. Let the light come out of you. Let your mouth open up. And table go take what I'm doing. Let the mouth go take what I'm doing. Let the mouth go take what I'm doing. Let the mouth go take what I'm doing. I have more than a song. I am the sacrifice today. I am more than a song. Are you the sacrifice? I am the worship. Are you the worship? I am more than a song. To my soul, I am your sacrifice. I am for the sun. To my I am your Thank you. 
Continue to praise him, Father. Don't stop pressing, Father. Don't stop pressing, Father. Let's stop pressing. Let your love Mm 
Hallelujah. 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 We give glory just with him. Love him with your own word. Love him with your own word. Adore him with your own word. The music is just to help you. But you are his temple. You are his temple of praise. You adore him and you worship him. You give him an altar when you worship him. An altar of praise and adoration. An altar where he can sit and arise. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We will start taking our communion. As we have praise him, talk to him. This is a time where you can talk and tell him, Daddy, 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 this is what I want to tell you about. Hey, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Daddy, Daddy, this is what I'm talking about. Hear my cry, Father. Hear my cry, Father. Hear my cry. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Use it like a portal. Use your song. Father, I come, O oh Lord, in the assembly. 
And I tell you, I love your glory. Father, come, O oh Lord. Rebe ko sheke rababase. Father, forgive me for my faithfulness. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for whatever, O oh Lord, I've done that did not honor you. Father, wash me clean, O oh Lord. Rebe ko rababababababa. I come at your table, O oh Lord. Father, I'm not worthy, but only your blood can cover me. Only your blood, only your blood will consign you to Only your blood, Father. Talk to him, 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 talk to him. Talk to the element you have in your hand. For sure is his strength, for sure is his body, for sure is his blood. As you are doing common in your with him, talk to him. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. It's a time of reconciliation. It's a time of Abba Father. It's a time of welcoming. It's a time where the prodigal son brought to his father. It's a time where you change your role and change your role of priest. He takes your turban and gives you clean clothes because you are renewing the covenant with him. You are lying to one. Let the blood wash, 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 please. Talk to him, talk to him. Don't stay quiet. Talk to him, talk to him. It's a time of sonship and fatherhood. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing, no entity, nothing. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. We love you, we love you, we love you. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew 26, 26 says, while they were eating, Yeshua took a piece of matzah, made the bracket, the thanksgiving, broke it and gave it to the Tamil, to the disciple, and said, take and eat. Can you remove the bread and bless it and break it? Oh, yeah. He said, this is my body. As you are taking the body, know that you are common with him, common union, one with him, one in spirit in mind. Thank you for the bread. Let's take the bread. Also, he took a cup of wine, made the bracket, gave it to them, saying, All of you, drink from it, for it is my blood which ratified the new covenant. This is the new covenant, my blood shed on behalf of many, so that they may have their sins forgiven. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Only your blood, only your blood can cover. Thank you, Father, for the blood. Let's take the blood. Thank you, Father, for the Amen. Thanks, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So we have come to a new Sunday. Amen. And we thank God for his faithfulness. This week was packed. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. The grace of God. Amen. Amen. We welcome all the, the men of God. Amen. Amen. Prophet Murad, God bless your heart. He decided to join us for one week. Amen. 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 It's the grace of God in his life. And we know the grace of God will manifest more and more in him. Amen. Amen. Thank God for him. Thank God for our audience online. Even though we are not on YouTube this morning, we know we are following. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the nine hours of intercession. Amen. That is zero for Jesus. They start just with one hour per month. And now there are nine hours. So it's nine months they have been doing that. Every every month they add one hour. So next month it will be 10 hours. Hallelujah. Amen. This is great. The Lord is calling us to be an army. Army of intercessors. Hallelujah. So straining us by the spirit. It's not by our intelligence. It's not by might. It's by our spirit. Hallelujah. As you press in limitation and broken. And a lot of people know there was ease after the eight, the nine hours. It was difficult to reach first, the seven hours. But after we passed that, it was easy to flow. Prophet Murad even said it looked like it's two hours. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so it was well nine hours from three to midnight. And it was midnight here. It was 6 a.m. dead time. Yes. It was 6 a.m. dead time because she's in Ireland. The other are in England. Amen. So it was powerful. Amen. So let's share some testimony. If you have a testimony, you may come where I am just because the people are watching through Zoom. If you have a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you, Lord. Merci pour tout ce qui m'a accordé jusqu'ici. Thank you for everything he has given me back now. For all of his grace. For all of his wonders. Cette année de plus qui m'a donné. For this new year. Amen. 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 New beginning. Amen. New beginning. Qui m'a toujours soutenu. That has always me. Tous ceux qui autour de moi. And all of you aidé. The people around me who have en pensé. Amen. En, en prière. Et en prayer, and action. And in action. Merci mon Dieu pour cette année. Amen. Amen. Give glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Well, hopefully this is a testament. Well, one is um, when we were worshiping, I um, saw Jesus, but it was the older form of Jesus. And I don't I, I ask God, what is this? The older the, form. Like he was form. older, right. like when he talks about he has like, I think, um, great. Ancient of days. Ancient of days. Hallelujah. The days. Amen. Amen. Did you know Amen. when the ancient of days appear? Hey, Rory, Kera, Baba, Baba, say. Baby, Kera. You know when he appears? When you have ancestral issue. Oh. Uh, 
when you have things that are from generation to generation, he appeared to break it. Because he's the only one who can break ancestral problem. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Praise you, praise you. Amen. The glory in Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So that's a good one. Amen. Uh, more than I even knew. <laughs> one thing was, is last week we prayed for, I prayed for a raise at work where I work. And, and um, it was weird because nobody had really mentioned anything coming up right now. Um, and I opened my paycheck and there's like, it looked like I got a raise. Hallelujah. So the only thing that I saw is we spoke it and it happened. Amen. So may it continue happening on my Amen. 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 <laughs> oh my God, this is good. Amen. And I'll let the Simone. Amen. I just wanted to. Go yeah, go ahead. I want to just thank the Lord too. Um, just grateful for the last month, Fridays of the month. Mm -hmm. Because before I have had to. Sometimes I had to work and I was just grateful to be part of the um, intercession prayer that happened, that happened on Friday and thankful for his promises. I received words and I'm just grateful for those. And I just thank him for everyone and you know, in the call and family and everything. I thank him for my husband and just he also received a word. So I'm, I'm grateful. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Not at this one. Okay. Well, we give glory for all of the testimony. We give glory. We cover them with the blood of Jesus for the birthday. It was also the birthday this month of uh, Mr. Nikes, who is here. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to you too. Amen. We have several people in October, and we thank God for that. So we cover all of the testimony in the blood of Jesus. We pray that there will be more. Amen. <laughs> and they will come and say, I received this this day. Because it's one thing to receive a grace. Is another thing to acknowledge the Lord for his glory. A grateful heart will always, always, always be rewarded. The more you give your testimony, the more the Lord manifests, multiply actually. Amen? Amen. And we thank God for that. We, can, we thank God for increase in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this morning, hallelujah. I have uh, to bring the word. I have to do the music, the word, and everything. But in Jesus' name, in the house of the Lord, we are all serving. Amen. Yes. And we thank God for that. And he has been teaching me from, uh, I think it's one week now, on the, the warrior. The warrior, the army, the soldier. All start when I uh, ask him first, and you can give the mic for the people who will be reading the Bible also. I uh, ask him first uh, the transformation that the ministry was taking. And um, I ponder, I ask, I say, okay, is it something in my word or anything? And he told me straight. I don't know why it took me so long to understand. He said, Paulette, I told you a few years ago, I'm building an armor. Amen. He said, the problem with you is you have tried to enlist civilians in the army. And he said, army are soldiers. They are not civilians. So you will have a lot of people who come for their own need, but they cannot stay around to do the prayer. They cannot stay around to do the warfare because they are civilian. So you have to understand that there's soldier heart and there's way of a soldier. And you need to learn and to train more. Focus on the soldier. Don't focus on the civilian. Of course, people receive salvation. It's good. It's great. But don't go there because your assignment is the army. Hallelujah. And I thank God for his revelation. And there's this book of one of the general, of I call him general because even through his hand, I receive a miracle. His name is uh, Bishop Harry Jackson. And these uh, men of God actually wrote two books that are very interesting. The first book is The Soldier Heart. Because he received also a word where the Lord told him, you, I'm giving you an assignment of soldier. Hallelujah. Yes. It's different from the other assignment. And then he wrote the second book, was The Way of the Warrior. The way of the warrior. So I will do a lot of reading, but ponder and ask because it's a discussion. Don't take it like a speech. It's not a speech. 
We are learning. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going the way where we want to understand our assignment here in New Beginning. So the first slide is the discipline of warfare. The discipline of warfare. And you know, when you are in this ministry or connect to this ministry, we are talking about warfare. We are doing warfare. And most of our minister, even if you call just to say hi, if there's something wrong about you, then we know it and they will tell you exactly which verse you need to go and where to go. Amen. Just because we are trained that way. Hallelujah. So the discipline of warfare, we start studying from the book of Bishop Harry Jackson. Take a Bible. We'll be with it. Amen. So we are continuing. And as we are trained and led by the Holy Spirit, we want to master the discipline of warfare. Amen. Amen. Do you want me to translate in French too? No, it's okay. Okay, only in English. Okay. So, no soldier will be sent to the enemy camp without understanding of the rule of engagement. Uh uh, uh uh. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just, okay, yeah. Amen. So no soldier will be sent to the enemy camp without understanding the rule of engagement and warfare. Hallelujah. Spiritual war, like natural war, is waged with strategic goals on many fronts. Amen? Amen. On many fronts. So most of the time, in strategic, when I, I went, because all of these days, I was going with my son to try to enroll them to the army. Jordan passed, and Bless has... Um, they retain him for something, but the Lord will make his way. Amen. So when you enter the office, you will see different uh, rooms. You have the army, you have the navy, you have the, the national guard, you have the different, different body of the army. So in the spiritual army as well, you will see that there's different part of the army. It's not all doing the same. Amen. Amen. So you will have like, the some who are for the air control, what is coming through the sky, Amen. what is coming. We have a part of a ministry called watchmen also in our group. What are you doing? You are on a tower and you are looking far away. What is coming? And as soon as you send something, you have to say it. And we all take position based on what you say. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have the air control and you can equate the critical dimension of war to the power of prayer because we see, then we pray until the things change. Amen. Amen? So, although Satan is the prince of the power of the air, that is Ephesians 2, 2, we can defeat his forces with focus and persistent prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. The first is you just need to see first what is coming. And then you go, you take your weapon, the different word you need to use, and start breaking it. Amen? Amen. So in the land, also, you have an army, a body of soldier for the land only. We need to know how to combat territorial spirit. There's a training also for that. You have intercessors that are trained specially for territorial spirit. I read some book where some men of God will go and check in an hotel in an area and pray for one month. Break those before they enter into the city event for evangelism. There's this Billy Graham, when you read his story, you find out that he has like 2,000 women that were at home. They were mostly mothers keeping babies at home. 2,000 praying for him before he go to a city. So they will pray like, let's say for this city. The 2,000, one month before he entered the start ring, and they are mother at home. So you don't see like, okay, perhaps, no, they don't go to a meeting. No, they know that every day I pray two hours for Billy Graham. I wow. pray. So before he come, it's like he has shut down the enemy. So when he enter, when he said he do the altar call, he always do the altar call with the same song, come as, uh, come as you are, you know that song? Yeah. Uh -huh. As soon as he said, thousands of people will run. You will think, oh, this man is so anointed. No, they will master 
and they will hold the sky before we enter wow. into the city. Another one you can check, Spurgeon. Spurgeon has 8,000 people praying in tongues. 8,000 at the basement of his church. He has a huge church. If you read the story of Spurgeon, he started preaching when he was 15. He started preaching. And he started preaching. He was passing. Uh, he, they never gave him. He loved the word of God. Okay? And of course, what he will do is, it, because he didn't have an, an avenue, an outlet to preach, the Lord told him, type your tests and distribute them like bread to people. So people start, he start doing that. And people start even being healed, just reading his tests. Wow. And one day, the preacher of his church was not available. And they asked him to preach. As soon as he stepped, I think he was 15 or 16, they never, he never put back the mic. He was powerful in the world, wow. you understand? But for him, he will explain to you that he trained 8,000 intercessors that were in his basement, praying like four hours wow. every service. Wow. It's amazing what is like that. You go to Yongisho, Benny said he went to Yongisho. You know, American, we are like, we, we wake up late and you come, you just say hallelujah. No. Yongisho, they wake him up at 5 a.m., rush to the church. He arrived, he found like 4,000 people sitting and praying. So he asked the, the man who was hosting him, like, why we have to go so early? The man said, but this is where lay the power. You cannot miss intercession. And Benin was like that. He's so used, you know, with the American women. And then he said he went even to eat uh, with Yom Kisho at his table. And he has the, 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 I don't know how to call it. He asked Yom Kisho to pray for the breakfast they were taking. He said if he knew, because the wife was giving him sign like, <laughs> he said, don't give him the prayer. Yongisho took the prayer. When he stopped, it was lunchtime. Because Yongisho was such a man of prayer that he didn't know when to stop. He would start blessing the bread, blessing the people who plant the, the rice, blessing the people. I don't know if you see. He went on and on and on. It was 12 o'clock. So young, uh, Benin said, we better pray for lunch now because I will not ask you to pray for lunch because it's three hours of prayer. But this is a type of people who are so connected to the spirit of intercession. And you will see how the hand of God walk in their life. Amen. So in the land, you have to know also how to do the combat. The people who know how to master the, the spiritual warfare in such a way that they can break powers in region. And they know how to do spiritual mapping. Amen. And in that order also, leaders of church, the leaders church God is raising now, is leading people, is raising people who know intercession. I'm not talking about the, just the popular one, the one on TV and everything, because on TV, there's a lot of things there. But I'm talking about the people who are in his plan of the end time. Hallelujah. They know that they will tell the devil we know you are here, but we have nothing of you in us. Hallelujah. So to acquire the discipline of warfare, ministers should be trained. We are to be trained theologically, the Bible, testing of character, the second one, and moral fidelity, and also be examined psychologically because it's very important. You have a lot of people who went overboard who said Jesus was coming, they start family, and a lot of people die because psychologically, they were not balanced. Mm -hmm. So all of those need to be tested. Print before Bible, test in our character, moral fidelity, and psychologically. It's very important. Hallelujah. Amen. So becoming now a world-class warrior demand a lifestyle based upon discipline commitment, and the word of God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we go step by step, and if you have questions, you will put your hand up. Hallelujah. Mm. The first three things we are told today, because I will teach the rest in the forum during the week, 
is three things that we study step by step. The first one is look in. The second one, look up. And the third one, look out. First one, look in. It starts by in. Then you look up and then look out. Hallelujah. Amen. This is in the basic training of the warrior. You need to look inside. What is inside? Self-examination. What are your motives? What are your motives doing church? What are your motives being a soldier? What are your motives? What is your motivation? Who can read for me 2 Corinthians 13, 5? 2 Corinthians 13, 5. And you can give the mic to people helping. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Yes, go ahead. Um, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Now your souls will be strengthened and healed if you hold fast to your faith. Have go on, Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 13, 13 five. 5. This is the Passion Version. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's different. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's different. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Second Corinthians 13, 5. Mm -hmm. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own self, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Hallelujah. He said, examine yourself to see whether you are in faith. That word is very important. Examine yourself. Yeah. Test yourself. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you felt the test. Looking inside is the first step for every soldier. It's very important to look at yourself. Proverbs 4, 18 also say, I will read it. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, okay? Shining ever brighter till the full light of day. That means even if you start and you are not in the right path, as you grow as a soldier, as you grow in ministry, as you grow, you should be brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like that. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun. Shining ever brighter till the full light of day. Your light should shine brighter than in the morning of your walk with God because you receive more word. You receive more and you know how to come closer to the throne of grace so you can only shine better. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs 4, 18. Amen. We saw that David was a man with a lot of flow, but he had the habit to repent and go back to God. He repent and go back to God. He repent and go back to God. And truly, and ask for God for forgiveness. That make him grow. And you see all of the work spiritually of David. It was amazing. Amen? Amen. Let's read also Psalm 37, 23 to 25. Psalm 27, 37, 23 to 35. Psalm 37, 23 to 25. The Psalm 37, 23, 25 is written. But steps of God, steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in this way, in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his descendants begging bread. Amen. The Lord make firm the step, thank you, of the one who delight in him. Your, your, your step are 
order by law. It's another version. The law makes firm the step of the one who delight in him. Though he must stumble, as time will form, he will not we will stumble, but will not fall. For the law uphold him with his hand. So you have to understand that as a warrior, as you look in, there are things that will not be very good for God. So he will correct you. What I know from the Holy Spirit from uh, personal experience is he is there to correct you first. Hallelujah. Even if I do something and I convince I'm doing that, I'm doing the right thing, he will come after me and say, oh, that you need to go back and fix what you did. Because it's his role. His role is to make you sharper. He doesn't want you to be trained and become a casualty. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have to understand that the first step as a soldier, as you grow, is look in. Look if you are in faith. Test yourself. Hallelujah. And realize, if it's in you, he's the one who's commenting, not you commenting. Hallelujah. And as you grow old, you will see, he will not forsake you just because you have accepted his correction and accept to grow. So this is a path of personal victory to look in and eternal impact and spiritual success to be able to look in every time. The question sometimes is, are we willing to pay the price of personal discipline? Sometimes we don't like discipline. We don't like discipline at all because there's a price to pay to grow spiritually. And if you are not able to pay the price, you cannot do Hallelujah. You have to understand. Amen. So look in is step one. Hallelujah. So before I go to look up, and this night, the Lord made me read the testimony of a young man. And I will send you a video after because it's two hours. It's a world teaching. But his testimony touched me so much that I did not sleep before almost four. Because I fell on my knee, I start crying and repenting. I said, Lord, give us mercy. Because we take God so much for granted. We think he's there to satisfy all of our needs. We don't understand that. We need the mercy of God to survive this. The way our world is made now. We need the mercy of God. Because it takes so little for us to be exposed to the enemy and become a victim. Amen. So I will read you to you to his testimony before we go to look up. Because he gave me an example of looking in. This man served, his name is James Key, is from Uganda. I will send his video after. He served Satan for over 20 years. He started even when he was three, because he was abandoned. Actually, I can tell you a little bit about his life, because his mother wants so much a boy that she went to covenant with uh, a witch. And that witch was so powerful. She was the one, um, yeah, she has power over the whole region and all of the rich people would come to her to get advice and everything. So the witch told him, told the mom that, if you want that child, because she refused first to give the child, but she said, if I'm taking care of that child, that child will be my husband, okay? So the, he tells the story to fast forward that when he was one day old, she has to go. He, she has to go back and see the woman, and she said that when she went to see the woman, there was a wedding actually. There was everybody was dressed like a thing, and the mother just understood that actually it was a wedding of her one day son with that woman who was sixty years old. And when he was born, he said that, and the woman told him, it's just an example of uh, his testimony. The woman told him, you will not breastfeed him because he's my husband. And she said, okay, but she was thinking it's just a brand new baby. I will go back and breastfeed him. He's my, <laughs> he's my, my child, you understand? So she went back, put down the baby, and she went to prepare and thinking, I'm okay, I'm coming to breastfeed the child. And when she came, she couldn't approach the child because there was a python around the child. Nobody could approach that child. So for three months, 
that child was kept by the python and fed by the python. Nobody will have fed. And he said that the people who come at their house just to see a child with a python, but nobody can approach. That is the way he was raised. And of course, the father of the child was fed up with so much supernatural stuff or whatever. He left the house with the older children and the mother has a mental breakdown because her life has no more meaning. And he tell his story. So that is just a, a, an example of what was his life. Wow. He said, after serving as guardian master to Satan over 20 years, 24 already he was serving Satan in a, you, you, what he did was just awful. He asked people to forgive him every time he's giving his testimony. But he said people who flew all over the world to come and see him. Eight years old, nine years old. Because as soon as he see you, he can tell you your future, your past, where you are going, what will happen and everything. You want election? You want this? You want So he has so much money. He said by the age of 17 or something, 18, he has half a million of dollars every month in his account for people wow. coming for power. He will give power even to pastors. Who want power over the people. You understand? So he was ser serving Satan faithfully. He said he was not even a human. He cannot call it a human because he has no more feeling, no more feeling for people. He see you, he see you like an animal. You understand? And he can spread curse on you in two minutes. But this is a testimony I want to read from here. Okay? So he said, I discover the devil hate family. I gained a lot of insight in the devil's scheme against family and humanity. I realized that all the devil must dream and trusted agents were deployed in the department of destroying family. We need to understand the agenda of the enemy against family. Amen. So the devil knows the only way to rule and divert nation is to interfere with family. Because when it destroys family, most of the time, it's difficult to have a balanced church with, you know, broken family. Amen? So we, we have to look at it that, on that angle. So fathers have also, he said, fathers have authority to open and close all spiritual gates of their family. That role was given to men. That role was given to men. Whatever they allow in the family become the ruling factor of the entire family and generation to come. Amen? Or deliverance means rebuilding godly foundation and rewriting of family history through godly practice. Follow me. As you read this, I want you to assure you that the path to lasting victory and breakthrough is through submission to God leading of his Holy Spirit and his word. I was pleading with God for 14 days in prayer and fasting, asking him to humble me, but he was waiting for me to humble myself and avoid the pain of his hand, bringing me to that point. Why he said that? He gave his life to Christ. How? He was a 19-year girl praying. She prayed, she was an intercessor in the area where he was dominating. And the Lord gave her the assignment, like, go and speak to that guy. That girl knew every wicked thing he has done because she was friend with his sister. And she said, I'm not going, God. Because that man is so wicked. I don't know what will happen to me. And the girl said, okay, I will go. But I will go at seven just walking around. If I don't find him, that means I cannot go. Send a bishop, send someone else. I don't want to go. You understand? And now she says she went at seven. But you know God, he was going to the airport after doing a big mission of uh, shutting a, a church that was praying. Because he said, when the church rise up and decide that we will pray for three hours for nine months, in order to have uh, domination, they sent him specially because he said that the prayer of the intercession will not allowing wickedness to happen. 
We're not allowing witches to get out of the body. We're not allowing them to function. So they sent him to destroy the power of intercession. Uh -huh. So when he arrived, it's a long testimony, and I think it's better that you watch the video. He, they start looking for every member of that group of intercession to find the wicked one. Mm -hmm. And they found one who did not forgive her mother. So they came to that one and they asked her if uh, they can join. In that group, they put also a decision. They say, we will not allow anybody. There were 20, 21 intercessors. They said they will not allow anyone to join the group. They start 21, they will finish 21. You understand? So it was the rule. Nobody will join until we finish. So. What happened is someone came, that uh, person, agent of darkness, came and said, I want to join your group. And she said, the girl could see what she has on forgiveness. She said, no, you cannot join. Because we are 21, you cannot join. And the man told her, oh, you just speak like your mother. So as soon as he said, you speak like your mother, guess what? Since she has on forgiveness, she blew on him and start screaming. And he that was the door they needed. Wow. As soon as she started, how you talk to me like that? Who do you know? He said, anger is a way to disarm every man or woman of God or any person. Wow. In witchcraft, they want to have you, they make you angry. As soon as she was angry, he opened the door wow. to all of the rest who were in intercession as well. Wow. So that young man, because she opened the door, another the pastor have compassion on the guy, did not check if he was genuine or anything, admit him in the group. So it started breaking. Okay. Wow. So what happened here is he became a pastor. How he became a pastor? Okay. The young girl come out, find him outside, and she called him James. His name is James. He stopped first, but he didn't stop to her level. He said, nobody has called him James for 20 years. They call him master. You know, the first thing the devil gives you is pride. Yeah. They call him master. He said, nobody has called him James for more than 20 years. He continued walking. The girl said again, James. He said he will not answer. Because if he turned, he can send her madness in one minute just to punish her. But the girl called him again, James. It was the third time. He said, when they call you three times, wow. it's a time to attack because wow. in the spiritual world, it's like that. So he turned around to attack the girl. But he said, who he saw in that girl, he couldn't see her eyes. It was the light of Christ. He said he saw just a pillar of fire in front of him, and he saw a man inside. All of them, he said he, he was powerless. So he looked around. He summoned more demons because he was a master. He summoned like 600 of them to attack the girl. But as he summoned, they came. As they saw Jesus, all of them fled. He said they fled in 600. He find himself now, and all of his power left him. One girl, he looked through the eyes and she came near of him and she just hugged him. She said, Jesus loves you. He said he lost all of his power. You understand? Yeah. But now he become a pastor. I'm, I'm bringing you somewhere. Yeah. I know the story is a little bit long. I no, hope it's, it's not. Right. Amen. Now he become a pastor. He become doing deliverance. He become all of that. But guess what? He still have things that are challenging him in his own bloodline. He still have things he's fighting. And he say, how come I'm still fighting? I'm the one delivering people. I'm going left and right. But he's still struggling. And then the Holy Spirit bring him to this. He say, you have to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, Lord, you have to humble me. Uh, and the Holy Spirit said, no, you need to humble yourself wow or don't you don't want it from my hand 
You understand? Wow. So that is what I'm, I'm reading. So he said he want to avoid the hand of God to come on him, but he didn't know how to humble. And the Holy Spirit said, unless you accept there's bondage in your life, that is number one, and seek help from someone, you will always struggle. It was the response of the Holy Spirit. He said, the more I meditate on what God wanted, the harder it became to obey. It took another 10 days to humble myself and meet the challenge in my spiritual bondage. When that breakthrough came, I began to plead with the Lord. Lord, I am in bondage and I need deliverance. But you can deliver me yourself. So he want God to deliver him. He didn't want to go to the hand of anybody. That is his pride. Mm -hmm. Deliver me yourself, yes. Without going to a man. Seven days of his relentless petition produced no result. Nothing happened. God, I have accepted I need deliverance. I have been waiting for you. Why is nothing happening? I keep up for a week and decide to quit. He decided even, I'm not serving anymore, I'm not doing anything. Still pride. So when he went there, he said he has the most miserable month because he was not preaching nothing. He said, I'm not doing anything anymore. Leave me like that. Then the Holy Spirit broke the silence and rose, uh, but raised assault on my pride, he said. Because I could not humble myself, he stepped in and did it. He told me if I wanted to be free, I should go and ask the people I lead to pray for my deliverance. That is problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. This was an even bigger blow. You understand? I should have gone to some unknown pastor. He preferred to go Nicodemus way and ask for help. But now he's asking me to confess to my people. What would they think of me now? That order was just too much. It took me three weeks to gather the strength to tell them. You understand? Looking in, sometimes it's the most difficult. Because you have to admit that certain things are not right. And you have to look in the mirror. Amen. Then he finished with this. He said, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. It's Proverbs 15, 33. Man has embraced death since the day of Adam. That death is include really separation from God and the right to disagree with him or have naturally seek to negotiate God's terms, despise his counsel and hold on to evil. Heart that negotiate with him delight not in that fear of God. You want to negotiate your own terms to abide in his presence, your own time to worship him, your own time to praise him, your own time of doing your own thing. He said, there's no fear of God when you do that. Whatever we do in contempt to God, fortify bondage, willful disobedience, despising servant of God, looking down on our parent and partially obeying his word, you obey only what you want. All increase or bondage. He look far beyond or the or word and see or heart condition. God always see or heart. When we look in, are you looking only what please you? He said, I used to pray, convinced that my deliverance depend on my prayer. I thought I had already earned my deliverance and just had to reach out and claim it by force. Now I know better. Your deliverance depends on God's intervention. It's only God who can free you. He will honor those who fear him. His word clearly states, the angel of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him and deliver them. So all victory in spiritual warfare are works of angels of God. Angels open prison gate and lead soul out of captivity. Amen? Amen. I will send you the video and you will see. His story touched me and knelt down and started Because I saw that sometimes looking in, we are our own limitation because of pride. You understand? You think, oh, I've reached this level. I've done this. I've saved so many people. I've delivered so many people. You don't see that God is looking and he knows when he can enter. He just wants you to humble yourself. Hallelujah. 
That is looking in. Now, looking up. You cannot look up without looking in. Amen? Looking up. Lifting our eyes up is the way to seek God's guidance. Psalm 121 says, the song of ascent. I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He will watch it over you, will not slumber. Indeed, he will watch over Israel. We neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watch over you. Hallelujah. So powerful advance into God's purpose are preceded by powerful prayer. More and more, you will see that even in church, prayer time is like between 15 and 45 minutes. Many people are annoyed as soon as you start praying. They want your entertaining part. Mm. Why? Because the enemy know that he will be broken by the prayer of people. So many people just want what is happy, happy, happy. They don't want prayer. So when you find intercession, true intercession, are the one who delights in staying in the presence of God. But how can we do his will without seeking his face? Before doing anything, you need his face. You need to know what he wants. Much more, how can we go to fight the enemy without asking him if he should go with us? You cannot fight without him, his advice or whatever he said to you. Praise and worship also are powerful tools of intercession. Psalm 8 to say, through the praise of children and infants, you have established stronghold against your enemy to silence the foe and the adventure. It's to praise, to worship, you have answered. I remember once I was with Brother Francis in the group of intercession and the pastor said the Lord asked us to fast for one year. As soon as he said that, my flesh said, no, there's no way. Because I remember the weekend is the only weekend I can eat like, uh, you understand? And for one year, it was like uh, six to six um, during the week. And the weekend, we go dry three days. I said, hey, that wow. is not polite. And I told even the pastor to tell you the pride I had. God forgive me. I told the pastor, Jesus had died already. He never say I should die too. He said, well, I answered the pastor. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that fast for sure. So the whole group started. I said, mm, I'm waiting. I will wait. And of course, the Holy Spirit has to convince me. And I start fasting. But during this nine months, because it took me a time, man, I start like the third month. We have so much breakthrough. We were in a church for how long? I don't know. But the very head of the church was Freemason. The very head of the church. And we did not know. When we start those prayers, is when the things start being revealing, breaking left and right. Warfare start. Even the bishop decided that he needs to close a group. Hallelujah. But it was that for me nine months, but for them one year. That one year of prayer that was able to bring us past the appearance to the realm where we can now start breaking whatever evil was in the house. I remember once there were like offering time. I was about to give the offering. Suddenly I have open vision during that time. I have open vision and I see a hole. I see like I'm giving my money and it's falling on the wall. And I look like that open vision in the church. I look like that. And I don't see where the hole ends. Bottom left. Yeah. And I say, what is this? The Holy Spirit said, that is where you are giving. I say, oh my God. And the bishop make us do like a covenant for building, you know, those covenants. You have golden, you have a diamond, you have so the 10,000 will be diamond, the 5,000 will be golden, all of this title left and right and everything. The Holy Spirit told me, uh -uh. be careful wherever you are, be careful. 
another dream I had, and this is not persecuting church, but this is a way to say that we need to be in the way that we see in the spiritual realm what is going on, because we are particles. Another day, I dream, I come in front of the same church, and there's people, some are shooting themselves with needles. Some are, uh, I see people that are so uh, skinny, they're walking. You are even afraid of them because you think they will attack you. And they are feeling, they are up in front of the entrance of the church. So I'm so afraid. And I was with an angel and he said, come this way, I'll show you the way to enter. I enter the church. And in the church, they are celebrating. In the church, women have big hearts. They have nice dress. They have inside the church, they are dancing with their heart, with all type of things. As soon as I enter, they say, come, 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 come. And they will do like, uh, uh, this one speak now. And then he go and give the mic to someone else. And then he go and give the mic and celebrating each other. And I look. And then the angel say, this is why I want you out. I'm ready to go out. The angel say, where are your bags? I say, my bags. He say, yeah, where are your bags? You came here with two ministries. Where are your ministries? I say, I don't know. He said, look there. And there was a big bin, like a big trash bin, where a lot of bags were, a lot of ministry. And I say, wow. He said, yes. When they enter, they start being distracted. They celebrate each other. They dance. They, it's all they do. And the ministry in the trash. Wow. So he went to the, the bin. He put his both hands like that and he put two bags. He said, these are your ministry. Get out. Wow. And he showed me the way out again. I was able to go out. And he said, they are stopped going. You understand? We need to know because we are particle. You have a role to play. Amen. You need to know. You need to seek the face of God. Let him tell you what to do, what not to do, where to be and for, where to go. We need to know. Hallelujah. Amen. So he order or step. He order or step. And he know what is next. So you cannot go next without seeking his face. You cannot go next without him telling you what to do. It's very important. Let just not enter programs. Amen? It's very important for this end of time that you seek God and he tell you, this is the way you will go. This is, you turn left, you turn right, you do this. How we, we became after, even new beginning is long, but after we lost, I didn't go. The Lord told me, go and start intercession. We start intercession, we were two. I was praying with a woman, Mama Jemen. And we were praying every Thursday together. We need that. We say, God, if you have called us, manifest yourself. We were only two. We didn't want anybody else. Only two. But someone learned that we were praying. He started by the pastor. He found that we were praying. When we were praying, he joined us. After, he invited someone. And then people start filling the house. And then before we know, we were like 30 or 40 in the house. And then the house of prayer that we have, only the Holy Spirit. We don't want any program of nobody. We want the Spirit of God first. As we pray, as we are sitting and we are standing, what happened is, Francis, go ahead. What happened is, when someone entered, just at the door, the person starts receiving deliverance. We don't have to touch you. It will start them. Because we create the atmosphere. Hallelujah. And then after we have to take a church and everything and we start our way to doing church. But you have to understand that seeking him, he order your, your step. Seeking him, he bring you to the place where you need to be. Hallelujah. And it's not necessarily where men want you to be. Amen. But it's where you need to be. Hallelujah. And then next is what? Looking out. Looking out. So you look in, you look up to seek his praise, to know where to go, and then you look out. Amen? Looking out. Only 
after we have prayed about our motive and desire, looking in. Sorry. Looking in is praying about our motive and desire. And pray about our destination, looking up. Where should we go? What is our next step? What should our ministry do? Where should we learn? Then we can be ready to seize the opportunity to be focused. Then you can go. Amen. You look in your motivation. You look up. God to tell you exactly what to do. Amen. And then you can go forward. That is basic training. Success in spiritual warfare is impossible without wisdom. In this battle, we are not focusing on darkness. We have to understand. Even if in our cheating, we can explain the way, the scheme and everything because most of the deliverance, when we start doing deliverance, I learned from the pastor I was working with. When we start talking about like marine spirit or the moon, the queen of heaven, or people will start manifesting because we were unveiling the work of Satan. You understand? And most of the, I remember even your deliverance, we were uh, doing a teaching on witchcraft. She has no idea it was inside her. No idea. But we found that, she found that, and we found that she couldn't receive the, 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 the Holy Spirit. She couldn't pray in tongues. It was like block. She could not. We have tried all. She could not. Nothing would move. And, but we tried. We tried several times. And one day the Lord sent me, say, I want you to start preaching and explaining witchcraft. So as soon as I start, she started manifesting. She was in the back room. She started really manifesting. So she went to the bathroom and she, to the restroom and she fell there. And uh, Reverend Iola was there. Reverend Iola is making me a sign. She said, we need to call 911. We need, we need to call 911. So I, I stop what I'm doing. I'm going to check on her. I said, she's manifesting. It's no 911 here. What will you explain to the police and everything? Please, don't even try. So, and she said, oh, perhaps I took some medicine. No, it was whatever we were teaching mm -hmm. that broke loose. Now I was looking for a way out. And I remember we stopped the teaching on that time at nine. We did not leave that place at three. 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Because that spirit said, now you woke me up. Now you will deal with me. It took months, it took even years to get rid of everything. You understand? But what was it? The word of God. When you are teaching, when you are unfeeling, so you don't look at darkness like you glorify darkness or you are so impressed by the work of the devil. No. In the teaching, what we do, we unveil mm -hmm. what is hidden. We unveil signs. We unveil things that people have no idea. Sometimes, culturally, culturally, is accepted. You understand? I did a teaching on for children, when I was teaching the children, on sign, on um, tattoo, piercing, and all of this, in the same night, I was attacked by a mob of teenagers. They start following me. They came and they surround me first. And I look left, I look right, I say, uh-uh, it's not safe. All of them were between 12 and 15. Wow. They came and they start standing around me. I say, uh-uh, this is not a place. I feel like I'm secure. By the time I found that I start running, they were after me. I was teaching only teenager and young children on that time. So when I start revealing the sign, I start revealing the symbols, like the broken cross. Uh, cross. Who know the symbol of the broken the cross? Peace sign. Peace sign. Yeah, the peace sign. All of the different symbols that you see now in different things that are common. And I start on feeling the effect they have. And I start on feeling how when people are under the influence of those, after a certain time, they become numb. They are not sensitive anymore to the presence of God. You can be here, worshiping, worshiping. The people just, oh, oh, they cannot feel anything. 
because they are so much under the influence of those things they don't know anymore. So you have to tell the young people, hey, you choose this, you choose that. You don't accept this, don't accept that. This is not right. This is not, you understand? I remember, I'm just telling you all of the things that teaching can do. When I taught on the water spirit, the marine spirit, how they manifest, how they do. And my daughter came because she liked music. And unfortunately, many of the songs, sometimes I mix secular song. You have a lot of uh, water spirit in the secular song. So, and she said, mommy, I have this dream this night where people came toward me, but they were blue. And she said, I said, blue people, yeah. They came toward me, they were blue. And they said, you, you are just like your mom. And they, uh, she asked them what my mom did. Oh, every time your mom is talking, you are just falling, you are just falling. So you are just like your mom. And she did like nothing. She stayed quiet and they said, okay, perhaps you are different. And they pull a door. Mermaid dog, half human, half a fish. Like, you know, the, the Barbie mermaid and everything. And they say, okay, if you, you, you are different, take this as we give you as a gift. So she said in the dream, as soon as she saw the mermaid, she remembered the teaching. She starts singing a song of praise. Automatically in the dream. As she's singing, she said, those spirits start closing their ears. And they fell on the floor and they start screaming. And, and the more she's singing, the more they are screaming. And then she woke up. So in the morning, she was in my room. She said, Mommy, did you know what I saw? You understand? But why she will make the difference? It's a teaching. She was just 14. You understand? The importance of teaching and revealing what the enemy is doing nowadays. Because most of the time we think it's a movie. Most of the time we think it's imagination. It's not imagination. You teach, you teach the truth. The truth set free Amen. the people. Amen. Amen. So don't be hesitant. Hallelujah. Amen. So looking out, success in spiritual warfare is impossible without wisdom. In this battle, we are not focusing on darkness, but we focus on light. Because you are going toward light. Anyone you teach, anyone you pull from there, you bring him to the light. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You are bringing him out. So you are focusing, telling him how great is God, how mighty is Jesus, mm -hmm. how he can deliver you from anything, how he can bring you. You understand? You are bringing him out in the light. Mm -hmm. So the tendency is sometimes is rushing to move forward in this century. You know how they try to push everybody forward? No, but every step is important. Looking, look up before you look out. Mm. Amen. So today, let us ourselves and take a personal inventory. So am I willing to look up and draw strength? Which spiritual discipline do I need to strengthen? Am I able to look in? Am I able to look up? Am I able to look out? Amen. Amen. What are the places where I need strength? Is it in prayer? I tell people, if you cannot stand more than 20 minutes in prayer, you have a problem. I tell people, if you cannot read your Bible, stay in the Bible. At least 20, one minute, one, one hour, two hours, you have a problem. And that problem could be Satan himself. Because he's there telling you, you know everything you don't need to. I have some people like that who came for deliverance. They could not read the Bible for 15 minutes. They can. They try. The spirit inside will make them impatient. They will start feeling like an urge. They will start, they can take their phone, scroll for 10 hours is not a problem. Tell them to read the Bible. Even when she, she trash it, when she starts, she send it, trash it. She came back to me and said, no, I'm not talking to you because whatever is inside you is draining me. 
You understand? She will take advice for hours and hours and hours. But when you say read the Bible, she will back up. Mm -hmm. Why? The entrance of your word gives light. She cannot stand the light of God. I say, I will not deliver you until you submit your spirit to the word of God. Amen? Is what happened. Amen. Amen. So, prayer, check, check. How can I not pray? Another way, how can I not pray by myself? Because we get used, we get addicted to people. We get addicted. If there's people you pray, if there's nobody, you cannot pray. There's a problem also there. There's a problem there. So you need to both, to both with how long can I stand prayer? How long can I stand in silence with God and stay in his presence? Strengthen yourself there for everything. The Holy Spirit can help you for everything. Amen. Is there a place where you think, oh, my case is desperate? No. The Holy Spirit can help you in your weakness. You just ask him. He will show you the way. Amen. Amen. Same thing with Bible reading. Check in with Bible reading. Why can I just read the Bible by myself? Why? It's like a mirror. As you are reading it, he's reading you. As you read the word, the word is reading you. It's reflection. Hallelujah. So it's very important to spend the time. Fasting. People who cannot fast also. It's revealing you a spiritual problem. All of what I'm saying it's not like uh, uh, telling you there's something wrong with you. What I'm telling you, the checking point where you can see sign that you need help. Amen. Amen. Fasting. You cannot fast without eating. You still have to or do something always. You have to be able to do cry fast. You have to be able to do the fruit one. You do the one that please God. You don't do the one that pleases you. You do the one that please God. That means you forgive everyone before you start fasting. If not, you are wasting your time. Mm. It's very important. You are wasting your time. You release the prisoner of your heart. Release. Amen. Amen. And when you release, that means you don't take judgment on them after. Mm. You are the one releasing them to God. Mm. Amen. So fasting also. A soldier has to have a life of fasting. And it's not only the one engaged by the church. You yourself, you need to know that at least this day I'm fasting. When I'm going to pray, I'm fasting. We always have Thursday and Sunday before, after church we can eat, but before church we go fasting. So it's very important, the life of fasting. And there's day when the Lord himself will trigger a fast. Say from now on you're not eating. And you're not hungry. That's so true. Yeah. You're not hungry. You go out, you come in, mm, you don't feel. Amen. Another one, giving. Giving is another way of testing because you can have your heart for the things of God, but your hand is like, you don't give. That one also is a way because where your heart is, is where your treasure is. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a give and you will receive. Most of the people, they want to receive, they don't want to give. And they say, God does not need anything. He has everything. Who says so? Who pay for the electricity bill? Hallelujah. The, the woman of uh, Ashland, she usually say, water is free, but you need to have uh, uh, canals, yeah, pipes, to bring the water to you. So someone needs to pay for the pipes. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's very easy. Giving is very important. There's one teaching I do every year. This year, I didn't do, I, I need to do it by December. It's on giving. It's the teaching where most of the people quit the group. Because they say, here she go, you can speak here about money. And I look at them, I say, hey, excuse me. The God I know is the one who taught me about finance before giving. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If you master to know how to give when you want, you will see his hand. Amen. But if you say, mine is going nowhere, I'm the one controlling everything, it's up to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Evangelism is very important also. We need to check on that. Are we talking to others about Christ? Are we going out of a way to 
tell someone else about Christ or it's all about us. Amen. We have to step out. Amen. We have to look out on that area. How can we share the word? Is it just about me being by myself very well? God save my children, my family, and everybody, and everybody else can go somewhere else. No. How about bringing that to the others? Last one is worship. As a warrior, check your worship. Check your worship. It's very important to take time to worship. The secret place is the one that forged you. Trust me, I have place where I could have lost my mind. But if I did not have worship, oh, you have to learn how to worship by yourself. Sometimes stop the YouTube. Do with your own voice. Worship him. Express what you are feeling, what you are thinking and everything. But especially worship him. It's not having a self-pity party. It's about you worshiping him. Hallelujah. So am I willing to look out at the things in my future that make me anxious? Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Yeah. Okay. We are talking about the warrior. These are things that sometimes we barely teach. Why? Because we like, uh, not we, when we say we, perhaps I'm doing mischief. But more and more, you have more self-motivational message. Teaching you how you are great, how you are good, how you, you understand. But we don't understand that our life has a purpose. It's a calling of God. It's not about you being good. Because if you want to be rich, I have so many cars, I have so many houses. You don't need to be a Christian. Go to the Arab people. A lot of them are rich. They never say Jesus in their mouth. You understand? So if you, you choose perhaps the wrong church and thinking that because I'm coming to church and they, everything should come to me first before I serve God, it's not the message of Christ. Hallelujah. We come to him knowing that he is God. We honor him for, for that. We seek him first and then everything comes after. Hallelujah. So I want to take the last weapon before we close of intercession. Intercession. Intercession as a weapon. David, David, said David like in French. David was an example of intercessor. He moved it threefold and until. He was a prophet. He was a priest. He was a king. A prophet. A priest and a king. And most of us are not that we move in the same threefold. As a prophet, we can see what is coming. And we know what is coming. So you know how to intercede for what is coming, to change it. There are so many things you can change in intercession. I can say even everything you can change in intercession. Direct prince usually say that through intercession, you are carving the future. If you know how to put your knee down, you know how to change your future. You just see something, wow, it's coming. In the name of Jesus, you say, I say no. In the name, I refuse it. I refuse it. And whatever you say is carrying words. There's this man of God I told you about. He said that when he was operating, he was from, he's from Uganda. At a certain time, his command called him and said, pull out. Get out of the country. Cannot stay there. He said, Why? He said, This man of God is coming in the city. And as he's coming in the city, no one of us, no one of our agents can stay in the city or he will be destroyed. Just the voice of that man of God, he says, Sustain the word for 21 days. Wow. When he says any word, that word will stay in the atmosphere for 21 days and dominate the whole atmosphere. Wow. When it was Maurice Cerullo, you can read about him. He said when he went to Uganda, all of the witches and wizards and warlocks, they moved out of the country. And for 21 days, they say after he left, it's after 21 days they were able to come and permeate Permit again that was it. 
because the anointing in his life covered the whole area. And he said, you have men of God like that. As you intercede, the people around you need to intercede as well for you. Because as they interceding around you, it creates a cycle of protection also around you. So when you step anywhere, any darkness around has to back up. Hallelujah. That is the power of intercession. You are with me? Sure. Amen. So an intercessor will bring with authority and make things change. I say that. As a priest also, you are an intercessor. As you are bringing people in the presence of God, you are an intercessor. As you are bringing masses to the presence of God, you are an intercessor because you have to bring them into an atmosphere and they need to stay and grow them. Amen. Amen. That is your role as a priest. As a king, now, you are an intercessor plus authority because you decide. You decide, you judge. Amen? Amen. It's not just praying for people, but breaking the force of people. You declare. You declare. I have to, uh, um, one scripture, father, one mother. What they do is, they, they don't do long prayer, they declare. They say one word in my life. I can go for most years with that word. Amen. And it keep giving fruit. Amen. You understand? Amen. Because they declare. All they need to do is declare. That is a king. That is a kingly anointing. An anointing. You declare and you stay quiet. And you see the fruit of the declaration of the person giving fruit. Hallelujah. So in Acts 16, and we see also Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. Praise and worship create an earthquake. They were soon free. It's the power of intercession. They were free. Is intercession that creates that earthquake. You can pray until you create the earthquake. You don't need to scream. You don't need some time to scream. Just your prayer. You don't know what is moving around. I told you how I started praying in tongues because I was ashamed of my tongue. I was thinking it's like babbling like a baby. And the Lord told me once, let me show you the power of that tongue. I was in my car and the car in front of me it was not even close. In front, as soon as I start praying, the guy stopped his car, get out and start cursing it. And the Holy Spirit said, he just moved the demon inside. This is why it's so much in her in, in fury. So you have to understand that your intercession can go over sea. Your intercession can cross ocean, can cross continent. Your intercession can impose a reality to the enemy. You understand? Mm -hmm. When I say this 19 years old, stand in front of that guy who was 24, and she said, Jesus, love you. All of what he did for more than 20 years was chaos and destruction and all kinds of things he did. He stopped in one minute. It didn't take her one hour. She heard him. He was the first time he was hurt in his life. And he was completely disarmed. Hallelujah. She's an intercessor. When an intercessor go anywhere, he come with a mission. He come carry already the message because you go in the secret place. You receive the answer. And when you come back, you understand, you are already with the answer. You get me? It's like you hesitate this one. Okay. The priest enter the secret place. You know the, the three steps. Yes. He enter on up to the Holy of Holies. And in the Holy of Holies is where he was meeting the presence of God. Amen. And he will get answer for the people. So when he come out of that room, he come with the answer to the people. Amen. Amen. So you come with the response. When she went to that young man, even if she was afraid, she knew already that God wanted that man. When Barnabas went to open the eyes of Paul, he knew already that God wanted Paul. You get me? So the, 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 the power of intercession is to go, meet him, put him in the place, open his eyes, 
train him a little bit and release him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see. Amen. So, spiritual warrior, learn to trust the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Then you will learn to trust the goodness of God, even in darkness, in the heat of the battle. You will learn to trust God. Can someone read for us Act 18? And it's uh, almost the last verse. Act 18, 9 to 11. Act 18, 9 to 11. Act 18, 9 to 11. Acts 18, 9 to 11 says, now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. For I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you. For I have many people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God and among them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you understand that? An intercession is pushed only by what God said, not by what he said. Paul was thinking his life is in danger. He wants to leave that area. But God come and said, do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. I am with you. No one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half teaching them the word of God. Hallelujah. We need to be aware of what is God is doing and the season he's in. Amen. This is why we go to the secret place. It's not about program. It's not about everything that people are saying on TV or on YouTube. Listen, it's about what God is saying to you. Yeah. That's right. It's very important. So the intercession is a sign of communion with the spirit of God. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by his spirit. Amen. Amen. I want us to stand up and we take a prayer on some tree for ourselves. Some tree. I know we have different versions. So we have different versions. But take some tree. Some tree. You can stand up. It's a prayer of intercession. It's a prayer of communion. It's a prayer. See, it was David running away from his son. We may have trouble, but the Lord is with us. Hallelujah. Jesus. One, two, three. Let's pray. Lord, how are they increased that troubled me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul. There is no help for him in God. But thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cry unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I lay me down and slept. I awake for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousand of people that have set themselves against me around me. Arise, O oh Lord. Save me, O oh God, for thou hast smitten all my enemy upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Still Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for the word of today. Thank him for grace. Thank him for grace. Thank him for grace to look in. Thank him for grace to look up. Thank him for grace to look out. Thank him for grace to be with you, to protect you from the enemy. Thank you for grace. Thank him 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 for grace. 
You can be surrounded by the enemy, but his grace is on you. His grace is on you. His grace is on you. Thank you. Thank you. He has chosen you as a warrior, so that you can see. Thank you for grace. Thank you for being with you. Even if 10,000 are around you, he will protect you. Commit to him. Commit him to him. Your ways. Commit to him. Wherever you go, to first shot. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. Send us the Holy Spirit as a helper. As a helper. As a helper. Put your hands up. Put your hands up as a helper. Let his grace touch you. Wherever you are, let his grace touch you. Let his grace touch you. Let his grace touch you. As a helper. His power is here. His spirit is here. He wants to touch and change our life. He wants to stand by us and walk with him. Give him space. And you will see his hand. Talk to the Holy Spirit. 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 Talk to the Spirit of God. Commit, commit, commit to him. It's a time. He said, welcome, 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 welcome. Let his presence be with you. Speak, 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 speak. As a soldier, commit yourself. As a soldier, 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 as a Father, I pray for the salvation. Pray, I pray for the salvation of Axel. I pray for the salvation of Ben, of Joel, of Ness. I pray for the salvation. Have your way, O oh Lord, mercy on them. Pray for the salvation of Marcel. I pray, I pray, I pray. Pray for the salvation of Axel. Pray, I pray, I pray. Pray for the salvation of Axel. Pray, I pray, I pray. Pray for the salvation of Axel. Pray, I pray, I pray. Pray for the salvation of Axel. Pray, I pray, I pray. Pray for the salvation of Axel. Pray, I pray, I pray. Pray for the salvation of Axel. Pray, I pray, I pray. Pray for the salvation of Axel. Pray, I pray, I pray. Pray for the salvation of Axel. Pray, I pray, I pray. Pray for the salvation of Axel. Pray, I pray, I pray. Father, we humble ourselves to you. Hey, 
Cover your prayer with the blood of Jesus. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus.
Hallelujah. Amen. We receive our offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Is in the land of God who seeks a wonder He alone is worthy of our praise. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. Father, we bless this ocean. Bless the one who has given, Father. Father, let the grace abound in their life. Let them remember, O oh Lord, with hundred souls that they received in this time and season. Father, thank you for your faithfulness and thank you for your grace. Thank you for your outpouring in spirit, in truth, in revelation, in the wealth. Thank you, Father, and the help. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Can we share the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Shall we all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the heart of the Lord forever. It's a special day also because oh, on and um, online, Father, bless the people online. Cover them with the blood, Father. Let them see how they can. Be warriors in you. Father, we pray that this teaching will touch them and transform them. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. We cover them even with the blood of Jesus. Let grace abound. Grace upon grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, we are celebrating. Amen. Yes. Sister. Yes. Marcel is my eldest 